Hello, our project is reinforcement learning in T-Rex runner game. We will introduce our project in four parts. First is introduction. We know that reinforcement learning is a very popular research direction in the field of artificial intelligence, which can control the individual's independent action in a certain environment. And through the interaction with the environment, the individual can constantly improve its behavior. Our project is all about this game, T-Rex runner game. Chrome has a little Easter egg in it. When the browser has no access to internet, any non-local URL would be redirected to a small game, T-Rex runner. Press the space bar can control the little dinosaur across the obstacle. In our project, we are going to apply the techniques of reinforcement learning to train this game. Our goal is to train the dinosaur to jump more barriers to find the optimized path for solving this problem. Also, we try different methods to train T-Rex runner and try to find a better way. The second part is the related work. I will introduce one of the technology we used, DQN. DQN, which is called the DeepQ Learning Network, is a pioneering work of deep reinforced learning. It's a new algorithm that combines deep learning and reinforced learning to achieve end-to-end -end learning from perception to actions. And Google lets computers learn to play its ugly video games on their own. And they finally found um, computers play much better than human beings. The deep network architecture diagram given by Google is as follows. The input is the latest four frames of image processed into grand scale image. After several convolutional layers, then two fully connected layers, the output is an acute value of all the action. DRL is a combination of deep learning and reinforced learning to learn the control strategy directly from high dimensional real data. DQN is one of the algorithms of DRL. What it has to do is to combine convolutional neural network and Q learnings. But there are some problems of combining DRL and RL. First, DL requires a large number of label samples for supervised learning. Second, the, D, the DL samples are independent. Third, the target distribution of DL is fixed. Last, previous research has shown that problems such as interabilities occur when using nonlinear network to represent value function. Last but not least, uh, I will talk about DQN method of solving a problem. Firstly, it uses reward to construct labels through Q learnings. Secondly, it uses the experience replay method to solve the correlational and non-static distribution problems. Thirdly, it uses one CNN to generate the current Q values and use another CNN to generate the target Q value. The second is ACER, short for Actor Critic with Experience Replay Algorithm. It is an offline actor critic algorithm with experience replay, which greatly improves sampling effectiveness and reduces correlation between training data. ACER process three improvements to overcome some hurdle, and then I will introduce them. The first improvement is estimate the value of retrace queue. Retrace is an offline queue estimation algorithm based on cumulative returns. The second is importance weight truncation with bias cor correction. In order to reduce the high variance of estimation strategy gradient G, ACER uses a constant plus a correct correction term to truncate the importance weight. And the following um, is the formula represents the ACER strategy gradient at time t. 
The third improvement is efficient trust region policy optimization. In addition, SAER adopts the idea of TRPO, but it has higher calculation efficiency through a small adjustment. SAER no longer calculates the KL divergence between the current strategy and the new strategy after the update step, but maintains the running average value of a historical strategy and forces the new strategy not to deviate too far from the average strategy. ACKTR uses KFAC for trust region optimization, which is the first scalable trust region natural gradient method for other gradient methods. This method can learn in both discrete and continuous control tasks from raw pixel inputs. ACKTR combines three technologies, as a grid methods, trust region optimization, and distributed chronicle factorization. The integrated method's goal is to maximize its basic sum of this kind of reward with policy gradient. Transition matches and it uses policy distribution for S network. It also assumes the normal output distribution and equivalent to Gauss and Newton metric. Trust region method is used to rescale RNAs, which is similar with TRPO and ACTKR adopts distribution implement of KFAC, which can synchronously um, compute metric inverses. Compared with previous states of the art on policy as a great method, it can achieve higher rewards and a two to three fold improvement in sample efficiency on every region. As for sample complexity, uh, ACKTR is better than other first order methods such as A to C because it takes the natural gradient direction. The natural gradient gives the direction in parameter space, which achieves the largest improvement in the objective per unit of change in the network's output distribution. As measured using the KL divergence, by limiting the KL divergence, it also ensures that the new policy does not behave behave radically different than the old one, which could cause a collapse in performance. Considered to the computational complexity, the KFAC update used by ACKTR is only takes 10 to 25% longer computation than the standard gradient update. This contrasts with the method like TRPO, which requires a more expensive conjugate gradient computation. Now we talk about the data set. We get a T-Rest run again from a GitHub URL. It is executed from Chrome of Land error page. In this project, our goal is to train in the dyno that can automatically avoid the autochrome and reach the end to win the game. For the data set pre-processing, we overlap the four consecutive frames together and scale it. To reduce the number of parameters, then we close the right half of it. Finally, the image size is 80 modified 80 modified 4. Okay, the following is my part. I will introduce about the implementation of the two agents we have tested for our project. Dueling Decoding and Actor Critic. The first part is Dueling Decoding. As shown in the diagram, the agent consists of a convolutional part and the two MLPs for estimation of values of state and advantages of pair of states and action correspondingly. The advantages is basically the centralized Q value. The code for training this agent is splitted into two parts, one for sampling and one for training. The sampling part just interacts with the environment at the constraint of frame rate at about 21 frames per second. In correspondence, the training part takes the samples from the replay buffer and updates the agent. To prevent the high time consumption, updating the agent takes to making any influence on the real time requirements of the sampling part, we split the training part into a single process, thereby isolated.
In the training part, the object function is MSE between the expected value and the estimated value. The expected value is calculated by another network called the toxic net uh, against the one we interact with the environment, the policy net. The toxic net would also be updated, but less frequently. This is a common trick for preventing the propagation of the overestimation along the training process. Since the policy net always followed action with the corresponding maximum advantages, the overestimation of the Q values on a pair of state and action can make a huge impact on the performance of this agent. But it seems not that effective in our implementation as we can see in the last result. We have done the training for about 2,000 episodes. It seems like the agent just doing a random jumping since it believes that jumping can give a better average return. We think this is due to the overestimate on jumping on all kinds of states. As for the actor critic, it's basically the same in the term of network architecture, but with an additional policy part for deciding the distribution of the action. And the coding isn't split into two processes anymore because the training part directly takes the entire trajectory sample from the interaction with the environment. Therefore, the update can be done in the end of every loop and the interaction is not that frequent as in the DQN. As in SDKTR, all agents make use of the nature gradient to control the change of the distributions on states and action of states after the update. The reason for doing this is the function we're trying to optimize here as we placed on the, this video is, isn't actually the one we really want to optimize since it's only the approximation of the function of the real one we want to optimize. And the real one requires the distribution after the, the update, but it's very hard for obtaining. So as an alternative, we use the, uh, another function which share the first order derivatives on the current state as an approximation of that function, just the one we placed here. And uh, so we cannot do very radical updates, things that would break the condition for this similarity. So we have to control the step size. We achieve this by introducing the rescale method in the SCKDR. Therefore, the agent would be updated within the trust region. A significant drawback of policy gradient method is most of them are on policy method. During the update, they only use one trajectory sample from the interaction without the historical information we have sampled and placed in the replay buffer. In order to overcome this drawback, we introduce a lot of method used in the Acer, the actor critic with experience replay. We use retrace for better value estimation, and we use the importance weight truncation for better important sampling correction. As we can see, the agent performs better than the DQN after the same number of episodes, even if updated less times. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that the environment is implemented with a motion formula with gravity. However, the falling trajectory of the agent is not that nature since it moves like a, along a straight line. We believe that because the agent tricks some kind of flaw in the game environment by rapidly switch the action, which is not possible for human beings, but possible for machine. And sometimes it uses this trick to pass two consecutive obstacles for one jump, which is very amazing. If we plot the scores that the agent achieves in the environment, along with the episode of the training that we can see in the beginning of the training that these two agents behave the most the same, bad. And at the end of the training process, of about 2,000 episodes, um, clearly the actor critic behaves much better. And finally, we can do some analysis about the bad performance of the DQN on this specific setting of the environment. Even we normally describe them as very different methods, but uh, actually they are not that different. Consider about this, if we do the updating with all the trust region constraints and push the object function to the limit, during the training, what does happen?
clearly the distribution of the action would condensate on the action with the maximum advantages. So therefore, the actor critic in this in this setting would performs like uh, DQN. So we can consider DQN as an um, extreme version of actor critic. And normally, an actor critic with all the trust region constraint would perform very bad. That, in certain degree, explains why our implementation of DQN performs not that well.